Um, yeah, my name is Miriam Gruber. I'm from Italy and uh, working here as a researcher. And at, at the same time, I'm also a PhD student at the University of Leipzig in Germany. And yeah, thanks a lot for having me at this conference and also at this panel. Um, for me, it's 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 a it's a pleasure to present some first results of my PhD project, where I investigate the climate change discourses of various political actors, and more concretely on um, on political parties. So I start with the problematization and my research questions. On one hand, on one side, we have a rising populist movement that um, is increasingly influencing policies in various uh, European countries now. And the crucial role, especially in shaping discourses and language, uh, was noted since the so-called migration crisis in 2015. And accordingly, especially in discourses about migration. So various scholars argued also that the rise of right-wing populist parties in Europe and also the US, for example, has resulted in lost uh, votes for um, mainly mainstream parties or the big parties uh, of the political center or left and right of the political center. And on the other side, we have um, climate change and, and environmental issues, which are uh, gaining attention and appear to be a uh, relatively new focus or appear to be more present uh, in the last uh, years in, in the media, in policies and also in, in reports. So I put these two phenomena together and I deduced uh, two research questions. The first one is how do right-wing populist parties frame climate change and transport the topic into their mainstream politics. And the second one is when right-wing political parties address the issue of climate change, can a change in, uh, in the discourses about uh, climate change of political parties left and right of the political center be observed? So the relevance um, for this conference or conference topic might not be too obvious on the first side. In fact, my research question and research approach do not focus on transition or transformation in, in any way directly. However, my results show very interesting things um, and they show, they show how, for example, how present or, or important uh, transition as a term is in discourses uh, around climate change. So um, I do not want to anticipate here too much, but transition as a term was quite present in all uh, cases uh, which I analyzed. For example, uh, I read a lot about green transition, ecological transition and energy transition and every language was also a, a bit different, but uh, more about that later. So, um, in fact, research has shown that in the case of environmental or climate issues, language often determines how different actors interpret processes and phenomena and how then the problems are in fact addressed. So therefore I choose to uh, do a critical discourse analysis uh, or concretely the, I apply the discourse historical approach and I think it fits uh, this research question very well uh, because also it goes beyond uh, the disciplinary restrictions of um, political science where I'm, where I'm from. Um, so here are the key steps I follow for my discourse talk approach. So the first I already outlined uh, a little bit, the problem problematization. Uh, afterwards, uh, there is the consultation of theoretical concepts. I will not go into detail, but I, I just say I consulted literature about populism, of course, and then also concepts um, on party competition. So afterwards, um, the systematic collection of the data follows and also the context information. And in the methodology part, uh, 
I selected and prepared all the data for the specific analysis and this also includes uh, downsizing of the data according to uh, criteria. And lastly, of course, the actual analysis and the interpretation of, uh, of the data. So, as I mentioned, my research is based on a case study of three different cases of European countries. For my first research question about right-wing populist parties, uh, I referred to three different uh, parties which are relevant on a national level, meaning they are uh, at least in the parliament and sometimes also, for example, in Austria, also in the government. And for my second research question, I then focus on the big parties left and right of the political centers of those countries. So I will today focus on, on Germany because of the time. I will uh, go a little bit in detail of that case and give you some first results. For the time and data period, I uh, choose the time between 2016 until 2020. It was um, when the populist parties in many countries um, came into, in the, into parliament and they are, they are stronger and more present also in the media and also at the same time um, the climate change appeared to be a, a, a new focus, uh, I'd say, in the, in the media. So I include in my analysis uh, different documents such as social media data of Twitter and Facebook party and election programs of the different parties, parliamentary documents, policy documents, um, and this way I include also so-called fields of action to get a pretty broad picture of the discourse in, in general. And during this uh, critical discourse analysis, um, where I also want to see if there are possible, is, if there is a possible change, I rely here also on Kritzanowski, which uh, on this concept of him, his, but I adapted it to my research question and problem. And this uh, figure explains it very shortly, the two levels I analy analyze for each case. So first enactment of climate skepticism. This is where I focus on my first research question and concretely on the discourse of the right-wing populist parties and their communication. In the second phase called perpetuation, I analyze the second research question and there I focus, as I said, on the, on the mainstream parties and how they uh, speak and write about climate change. And following the discourse historical approach and doing the analysis, um, here I rely also on Kritzanowski, but uh, more concretely also on Ruth Wodak and Martin Reisiegel, who propose a two-step analysis. So in the entry analysis, I identify the topic of a discourse, or in other words, what the content is, uh, ab is a discourse about. And in the in-depth analysis, uh, I go deeper and investigate the so-called discourse strategies on one side. It is, for example, how they present certain actors, how they speak about certain processes and how they present uh, issues and, uh, and other topics. And uh, in this step, uh, I investigate also their argumentation strategies. Um, they are called uh, so uh, top boy and here I identify how, how these actors argue in these discourses. So in, in this presentation, I will focus mostly on, on, the, on the first step on the entry analysis. And now I come to the, to the first results of the, the first case, Germany. One crucial aspect of the discourse analysis uh, are the context information where uh, a discourse is embedded. So for instance, one information about is, is about the salience or presence of climate change in general uh, in the society, which I, uh, for example, relied on Google Trends data. And here I show how 
how present climate change was in, in the political communication in Germany of different parties uh, in their um, social media or concretely uh, only on Facebook, in Facebook data. So how, how many posts uh, I could file, find on uh, climate change. And here you can see um, it, it was raising, especially in 2019, and here the peak, there's a clear, a very clear peak in September 2019. This graph uh, shows the salience of climate change in only IFD, Facebook and Twitter posts. It's a first descriptive data or uh, context information uh, that I assigned to the enactment phase of my analysis. As you can see, I identified here three uh, peaks. The first one um, was uh, in Ju June 2018, and uh, I was able to link it to a heat wave in Germany. The second one coincides with the general uh, politicization peak. It was in 2019, September 2019, when the Fridays for Future movement was very active and the Youth Climate Summit was also organized. And the, the last peak was a few months later during the World Economic Forum, where climate change was also very present. So, to do a discourse analysis, I was not able to include all the social media posts, so all the data which is out there. So I downsized it according to a few criteria, uh, like uh, the social media peaks of climate change and, th and the time, the likes of Facebook posts, and also the relevance of the topic. So I divided the data uh, according to the literature on three stages of recontextualization. For the primary context, uh, which is should be the main source uh, context of a discourse, I started the party manifesto of the AFD. Then the secondary context, it, this should be the, the so-called target context. Um, and then there I focused on the social media data and press releases. It is, um, to say in other words, the day-to-day -day communication of a party. And this is the communication which is mostly read by, by the people. And in between is the recontextualization. And this uh, uh, here I relied on the election programs of the party. And I analyzed each context individually and followed the two-step approach, uh, which I um, introduced to you shortly, the entry-level analysis and the in-depth analysis. And uh, here you can see the discourse topics. Uh, it's uh, a lot of criticism, as you can see, in the secondary context about the European Union, about CO2 pricing, concretely about uh, concrete actors like the Green Party, but they, they also criticize, for example, uh, Greta Thunberg. Uh, um, and also, in general, I underlined it here, energy transition is uh, one topic uh, which is present in all the contexts, so in all um, kinds of documents. And now I, I will show you shortly what the, the German right green populist party, the AFD, says about the energy transition. So in German, transition is um, uh, can be uh, translated into different terms. And Energiewende is the, uh, is the term which is used in German. And I uh, translate it to energy transition. So it's uh, this there in German in German energy transition is also a concrete concept. It is politically also defined and means the transition from coal and nuclear energy to renewable energies. So here I have some citations of their communication. They claim, for instance, that energy transition is completely misguided. 
it's absolutely disastrous, it's washed and it raises uh, electricity prices. In more detail, they claim that energy transition will lead to mass unemployment and it has to be stopped immediately. Uh, Germany should uh, return uh, to a rational energy and economic policy. And they write also that Germany scores worse than Uruguay or Malaysia when it comes to energy transition. And the Green Deal is a continuation of the completely misguided energy transition in Germany. So the criticism is clear and loud, I would say. Interesting is also that in their discourse uh, about climate change, uh, other uh, aspects uh, like ecological transition or green transition, which I find, for example, in the Spanish case, is completely absent. It uh, can be uh, a difference in the language, but uh, it can also mean something, something else. So, however, they do talk about a transformation or the great transformation. They claim that the great transformation of the society is uh, technically utopian, economically unaffordable and already unattainable. Uh, they claim to say yes to environmental protection, but they want to put an end on climate protection policy and therefore also um, they want to put an end on decarbonization and the so-called transformation of society. So um, they, yeah, they also claim that the German government is misusing an increasing CO2 concentration for the so-called great transformation of society. So in, in general, the AFD does not concretely or never completely uh, explain what they uh, mean by, by transformation. So, um, but they mostly connect it to processes of decarbonization or emission, uh, which means again, energy policy. So um, it's very similar to, to, to the topic of energy transition. And, uh, but it seems also to go a little bit beyond because they include in this aspect, the society, but it's not really clear what they criticize beyond the energy and emission issues. So it's, it's, it's pretty uh, open in, in their discourse. And in some, I would say that populist right-wing party in Germany criticizes every possible change of the status quo, which uh, other parties or activists or people uh, want to do like uh, the energy transition or transformation of any kind, and they frame it uh, negatively. They highlight possible negative consequences. And uh, yeah, in, in some they say that the energy, uh, the economy, the society should not change. They want to keep the status quo. And this is actually, or this can be a typical char characteristic of right-wing populist parties or right-wing populism. So I put it in a, in a wider context and uh, I compared it to the mainstream parties and I now outline some results of the second research question about, about, the, about their communication. In Germany, it's the CDU, CSU and SPD. And here I divided my analysis into two time periods. So before the great peak, the, uh, the AFD and those other actors um, talked more about climate change in 2019 and afterwards. So this, this way I tried to identify any possible changes um, which could be interesting. And also in, in this, um, uh, here I present you also of, I focus on, on, on transformation and on, on tran transition. So here are the discourse topics of the mainstream parties I identified for in the first time period. 
it's a lot about climate protection, about responsibility for international climate protection, about modernization strategies for the economy and also climate targets. And as you can see, transformation is uh, quite present also. And um, here I outlined uh, the content about transformation. It's this work club is a is a summary of the issue and the context of 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 these two parties, and. Um, they connected widely to climate and energy issues. Um, they presented it as a pro as a process which is needed, which is also unavoidable uh, to uh, to do to change to a sustainable development of the country and and also on a global level. And to achieve this, they say science, politics, and citizens must work together. Um, they say, for instance, that the Climate Protection Plan 2015 outlines a step-by-step -step transformation in technology, economy, society, and culture. This um, is to be shaped a learning process involving science and accompanied by social discourse process. Um, in fact, here the content is very important to the mainstream parties and especially CDU, who was part of the government until recently, requested that a great transformation is needed in Germany and in, or in order to achieve the climate goals. For instance, a former government advisor of Councillor Merkel wrote a book about it. Uh, moreover, they have also uh, installed an independent scientist to make up the German Advisory Council on Global Change, um, where they work on societal transformation and how it can be reached. And they claim generally that we cannot simply maintain our current lifestyle. They urge for drastically reduction of consumption of fossil fuels and that uh, we must learn to manage our economies in a more sustainable way. So, however, in the second uh, time period, transformation resulted uh, no main discourse anymore. So, it's, it, it changed in general a bit, but uh, for example, responsibility for international climate protection remained and also other topics remained, but transformation and also transition is not, um, is not a main discourse topic, which is... Which Sorry. Is... Yeah. Sorry, do, do you have... Uh, just to, to, to say that, of, okay, we have uh, more time than the other uh, sessions, but just to say that uh, it, it would be good to have, uh, I don't know, a few minutes or something like that, if you, I don't know, uh, what is this? The level it's, and the I, I will conclude. Okay. Now. Yeah, I will conclude. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, exactly. I, I just wanted to say that uh, at this point, I can only speculate about the, the impact the right wing populist parties has on this change. And I will, uh, will compare the other parties to maybe get a general idea. So, um, transition as a discourse is present, uh, transformation as a discourse is present, and populist parties show hostility towards any kind of transition or transformation in the climate change discourse, while mainstream parties argue in favor of transition and transformation policies, politics, or uh, change. So, thank you very much. <laughs> and now I look forward to questions or comments. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, so um, it was very, very interesting, and I, I, we look forward for your final results, of course. Um, I, I wanted just, I was thinking about the, the fact that uh, I said in the examples you showed of the, uh, the so-called populist parties in, in Germany, the, uh, the importance of the national uh, topic so uh, to, to, to of course uh, to exalt the national interest. Uh, I was wondering if perhaps not now but in the future if you have ideas or, or data on the influence of this 
um, strong uh, frame uh, the, the importance of the, the national interest and uh, in this kind of discourse on the discursive of, of the other parties. Is there an influence? So the fact that these parties are strongly underlining uh, the importance of the national interest in, and uh, uh, against uh, the rest of the world, perhaps, etc. If there is an influence on that, on the uh, on the discourse of the more moderate parties of the yeah, traditional parties. Of, <laughs> thank you. This is uh, the first question after. Yeah. Thanks a lot. It's it, it's a great question and um, yeah, the national interest is uh, as you as you said, it's very present in the populist discourse. So they. Um, for example, the German uh, right-wing populist parties, uh, they use a lot of, uh, of framings like our forest, mm -hmm. um, our, our, our homeland, mm -hmm. uh, our society, our children, and this, uh, this kind of framings. And it's clear in their um, discourse uh, that's that the national interest is in front, and I uh, also wanted, uh, or I, I started with the with the idea of um, analyzing their, in their concrete impact on the discourses of of the mainstream parties, and I recently uh, changed it because uh, the discourse analysis might not be the best um, mm. or adequate method to to analyze these causal uh, connections yeah. but um, as I already said here I I will try to speculate already uh, at least about it a little bit because I the German mainstream parties for for uh, mostly the CDU they uh, launched a initiative or a, yeah, uh, they have a website and everything about the German forest. Mm -hmm. So in I think it was in 2019 or 20 uh, or the end of 2018 where they started really to uh, focus on on the German forest and they didn't do it before. Mm -hmm. So of course um, one argument can also be that the other movements like the Fridays for Future had an influence on that because uh, also they um, talk about the forest. So it's hard to give uh, to mm. say who who was the who was the impact factor. But yeah. the change yeah. is here. Is here. Yeah. 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 So an aspect of this course analysis that could be uh, interesting is intertextuality. So uh, I think in Bergen they work on that. For example, the Klimling. Uh, laboratory and it's just to understand how a discourse cites or uh, react, reacts to, to another one. So it could be uh, one of the solutions, but uh, there are others, it's just, uh, yeah. Thank, yeah. Thanks, I, I will look into that. Of course, these are very uh, populist and quite radical parties, but it would be interesting to see also right-wing parties, how they frame uh, uh, the uh, environmental issues, uh, because uh, of course it's it's interesting to see which are the values that are. Uh, you you said our forests. This is, this is very interesting. It could be a sort of point of connection with uh, the protection of the environment. So okay, we we don't uh, think that climate change is uh, is real or these kind of things, but anyway we want to protect our forests. This can be sort of. Uh, small uh, positive aspect <laughs> in some senses. But, uh, exactly, yeah. Of course, there are, yeah, I have in mind the uh, researches in the US, etc., in which they try to understand uh, different uh, parts of the political spectrum, which are the values and the, the, the rankings of values and yeah, how the, the environmental issues are uh, reframed and uh, uh, reinterpreted. Uh, are there uh, other questions? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Yes. Fond, yeah, it's better to come just uh, here. Okay. Thank you. So I have a subsequent question on uh, the fact that you work at the junction between right-wing and populism. 
And I wanted to know why or if you're thinking about putting it into perspective in order to see if that's really at the junction that you think something innovative or if what you study could be something you say either for every populist movement, so also left wing, or uh, if uh, on the opposite, it could be something that's uh, inherent in right wing movements and not mm. solely in right wing populism. So mm -hmm. that's my question. Um, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, it's uh, it's also a very good question, and I thought about it uh, also a lot. So it's it's relevant for my for my research definitely. Um, I did um, I choose to do right wing populism, so not populism in general, but definitely right wing because um, I. I also rely on the literature of migration, on the of the migration discourse, where the right wing populist parties were the actors who influenced the discourse on migration. And I I know migration is uh, one of the main topics of those right wing populist parties, and also the far right, of course. But um, especially this ri rising uh, movement, I I'd say. So I wanted to say to see if uh, beyond the migration topic, in a in a topic where those parties and those are especially right wing populist parties who let's say make political money out of uh, out of it, if they do it also on a topic which is uh, maybe more used by the left. Or the left is very strong in 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 pro environmental uh, protection, so it would be interesting to include some left wing populist parties. I'm quite sure that they do not deny climate change, so I I wanted also to focus on climate change. So the other thing. It could I could instead uh, focus on on the far right in general without the populism thing, but um, there are already some very good studies about um, the far right and the environment. So mm -hmm. this is a new a new perspective, I guess, or I hope to get a new perspective. Yeah, thank you. Of course, there is a terrible problem is the definition of populism and uh, its uh, boundaries, what is populist, what is simply far right or far left, etc. This is a very big issue. It's not my field, but I know that <laughs> it's very difficult to, yeah. Yeah, these parties I choose, there are some, um, yeah, the uh, categorizations. So, you have to follow some authors, I suppose, that you, yes, you follow. Yes. <laughs> so, I, for for this um, selection, I I was lucky. I could just follow the the categorization of other authors, and uh, yeah, it worked out for me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know if there are other. No, I don't see hands. So I think that uh, uh, we can continue with our presentation. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, good luck for uh, for the rest of the, the research.